All right, guys, welcome into today's recovery video. Some other videos I've done have been more static stretching. We will have some of that, but the theme of this is going to be movement in the joint. We're going to give each major one, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, and your spine, some good amount of attention with some controlled articular rotation work. Basically, taking the joints through a big range of motion while going to some stretching positions actively and passively for about 12, 13 minutes. We'll see how long it takes us, but we are gonna start with our ankles. So first things first, we are gonna sit very, very tall. You're gonna choose one leg to start with, one leg straight out, other leg you're gonna hug in. I'm gonna hug it in right under my hamstring and really try and pull that quad to touch my chest. Be as tall as I can, like I'm balancing a glass of water on my head and we are going to basically just take this ankle through the biggest circle we can possibly take it through, trying to create as much tension in our ankle as possible. Think the ankle is as far away from your brain as you can get, right? So with that in mind, we want to squeeze as hard as we can with those tiny little muscles to get as much blood flow and mind to muscle connection all the way to that ankle as we can. So we're taking that big circle, even bigger, pretending like your big toe is a marker on the end of it. We're trying to draw the biggest circle we can. And then let's switch that circle. So you should have, not should have, I didn't say it. You could have switched halfway through and that's what we'll do on the other side. So we got about 15 seconds left just taking this ankle through a pretty big range of motion again, squeezing hard, pointing toes down, pointing toes up throughout this range of motion, just trying to get a lot of blood flow to the area. And now we're gonna take that ankle into a bit of an active stretch. So same ankle, you're gonna plant right in front, we're in this half kneeling position. Use my body weight on this thigh to lean that knee over the toe. Trying to take that ankle into a really big bend, then we're gonna back off and we're gonna keep going into this. So now we're kind of using our body weight to take the joint into a deeper range of motion here. Just trying to lean on it. And you don't have to go in and out as quickly as I am. You can go quicker or you can go slower. So you can hold that position or you can go in and out as much as you want. Keep taking that ankle through a good range of motion here. Knees over the toes is kind of the focus. I'm not restricting my heel staying down. I'm actually letting it pop up. So I want that ankle to get as much bend as possible. And now we are gonna switch it to the other side. So let's take a seat back down. Start from the top on the other leg. Hug that in as tight as you can. And then we're gonna draw a big circle. So the first 30 seconds you can go counterclockwise, but go slow. Like really try and take like at least five seconds. Count to yourself. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, all the way through to five, 1,000 to do one circle. And then you can reverse it. So you can even do it that way. You can do one circle clockwise for five seconds one circle counterclockwise for five seconds. We're gonna keep oh, going. You can see I'm kind of manipulating my shin a little bit with my right hand to rotate a little bit further. Again, motion, movement, your range of motion, how much you can move a joint, the more the better. So if I can use my hand to actually help out, I don't mind right now. I just wanna get a lot of blood flow and activity into that ankle before we flip it over into our stretch, which we're gonna do right now. Same position, flipped, trying to drive that ankle into a big, deep knee bend. Knee bend and ankle bend usually go hand in hand when we're in this position. But as always, do not push into injury pain. There's a difference between injury pain and training fatigue or range of motion blocking type of pain. It's very sharpness to an injury pain that I think a lot of us could tell the difference. But there's also discomfort. If it's discomfort, just be patient, 
breathe longer, slower exhales and work through it. But if it is pain, if it is your body telling you, all right, I've had enough, let's not do that again, then don't push through that barrier. But discomfort is a barrier we want to push through. Let's go one more on that left ankle, going over that minute, I'm trying to give myself for each position right now. And then we'll switch gears. So that was angles. We are gonna head up to our knees a little bit. So quads, hamstrings leading into that knee. First thing we are gonna do is an elephant walk. If you have a pillow, a medicine ball, because you're not great at doing the classic stand up and touch your toes stretch, which is right here. If you're not able to get all the way down to the floor like me, you can put your hands on something. What we're gonna do is bend the knees. Look through the knees with our eyes. Then one at a time, we're gonna straighten that leg, flex this quad to straighten it, bend it. Other side, flex the quad, squeeze that quad to straighten it, relax. So we're not only straightening the leg, we're using the quad to contract and do so. So when I'm squeezing here, this should feel rock hard. Squeeze that quad, squeeze it, and then come back down. And just like I, I was showing, you don't even have to have your hands all the way down the floor. They could be up here, or you could just be leaning on something that's a little bit higher, as long as you're getting that alternating elephant walk stretch. That is fine with me. But as you can see, we are constantly moving through these repetitions, squeezing hard, just trying to get a lot of movement into these active stretches. Let's go three more each leg. Squeeze for one 1,000, then let go. Breathe, other leg, one 1,000, then let go. Two 1,000, let go. Two 1,000, let go. Remember to look through your knees. Three 1,000, let go. Three 1,000. Now we're gonna take it into the quad stretching portion. We are going to do a little bit of some lizard or just your hip flexor stretch. Let's get in this half kneeling position again. I want this back hip flexor to be stretched. So I am going to actively start stretching it here and then lean that hip flexor forward. So let's actually just do this hip flexor stretch. I'm calling an audible. This is not lizard. We are going for this hip flexor, which leads into the quad and obviously leads into the knee. So again, if you need an object, that is cool, but force this quad down and you should start to feel the front of that pocket stretch. And then we're gonna lean forward. Going deep into that range, kind of opening up the chest and eyes to the ceiling, coming back. Let's go in again. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze that hip flexor. My glute should feel rock solid. Then I come back, now I'm relaxed. So again, active, relax, active, relax. Let's go three more into this hip flexor. Can you hear my voice kind of shake a little bit? As I'm getting into this, that's an indication of how hard I'm trying to squeeze that hip flexor. The more you squeeze, the more you're gonna train your mind-muscle connection to gain more control of that area. Last one, then we'll switch sides. Okay. Same thing. We're not flaring the rib cage out. We're actually tucking the glutes under, rock solid, squeezing the knee down into the mat so you feel the front of your hip flexor, the front of that pocket, and then we shift and glide forward open up a little bit of the chest and eyes to the ceiling and come back. Oh man, you will definitely notice one side being tighter as very few of us are completely symmetrical. If you are, then you are an anomaly, a little bit of a freak, but that's okay. Someone's gotta be. If you are an athlete-based person and have been your entire life, you will absolutely be imbalanced. Especially if you played a sport that had a lot of rotation, like golf or baseball, where you tend to be obviously rotating one direction. Tennis might have a little more 
balanced nature just because they use both sides, but they're not that much better off. Let's go with three more. Squeezing hard. My left side is much tighter on my hip flexor, which actually is the reason why I have a little bit of jumper's knee in my left knee from time to time. That'll flare up if I'm eating stuff that's a little too inflammatory, not sleeping enough, or if I'm not doing this stuff enough. The tightness in my quad tends to pull on that knee in totality. I forget what number I said. Let's go one more. We're just hitting that 10 minute mark stretching after this. Oh man. We're gonna go more into our hips on our hip car. Okay. So we are going to get into a bear position, bear crawl position right here. Toes are gonna to be tucked like this. And I want you to pretend like you're balancing a glass of water on your back. So I'm actually going to put this ball on my back as a teaching cue to myself to not move my back too much. And if I do, then the ball will fall on the floor. The ball's just gonna fall the other way because it's too lopsided. Go do that. Fail on video live. All right, so if you have a piece of paper, if you have a marker, I don't know, a clipboard, there you go, this plate works better. Put it on your back. You are going to lift one leg out to the side as far as you can, looking like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. <sighs> then come back. Do it again. You're gonna squeeze that leg out to the side, trying to squeeze the outside of that hip without letting the object fall off your back. So now that I think about it, a clipboard would be much better. Not a ball. Let's go again. Toes up, toes up. Squeeze that knee out to the side. Your hip is squeezing so hard you feel like you're about to cramp. Then relax. Oh man, this one's a little intense. For my left hip, trying to squeeze out to the side as tough as you can. Come back in. Let's go two more. Really pushing those arms into the floor to help your torso stay stable as you're trying to isolate this hip last one okay let's go to the other side we'll go for about a minute on this side and go ahead and start on that right and remember guys relax if there's any position you want to stay longer in just rewind the video back to where that position started there will be chapters on the video that you can just go back and see which position starts where on the timeline on the bottom of the video <clears throat> and again let's go up squeeze toes up toes up and then you can just play it again from that positioning to start over because this is kind of just a total video of introducing you to giving a little love to each major joint and come back down <sighs> then you can do with it what you will let's go last one on this side lift Squeeze that outside of the hip without moving that clipboard. And down. So that's our hip, hip car kind of challenging based work. Challenging based work, I can't even speak. Taking the joint through an active range of motion. Now we're gonna stretch the hip out. So this will be our last one. On this side, you're just gonna go lizard position. So. If you want to get into it a little bit easier, let's go push-up position. Bring one leg up, foot is flat, drop your back knee down. If you can't stay here, this is too tough. Again, object under your hands to elevate your torso. Graduate to getting a little bit lower. Wiggle those legs in and out. Graduate to getting one elbow down. This is where I'm going to stay for right now. And we're just going to hold on to this position for about a minute from when we started it. <laughs> Since we've already been in it for a while. Remember, through all of these positions, your breathing is like your gas tank. If your gas tank's empty, you're not gonna be able to go on a road trip very far. If you're not using your breath to help you relax, if you're not using your breath to inhale as much air in before you contract, before you squeeze, then you're just not gonna have the most efficient road trip throughout these positions. Oh, let's hold on for 10 more seconds, kind of forgetting where we started. Nothing like a little more stretching won't help. Squeezing, relaxing, squeezing, relaxing. Let's go ahead and switch. 
push up position, other leg up, foot next to the hand, and go to the depth that you feel comfortable with. Some of you might feel it more on this back leg back here on the hip flexor. Like I said, my left one's pretty tight, so I'm feeling it right there nicely. But I'm also feeling it up here on this hip joint and this hamstring. So again, your depth is your depth. Everyone has a very different hip structure. Some of us have hips that allow us to squat ass to grass. Some of us have hips that do not. You're gonna get a little bit lower onto this elbow. We're just about to hit our 15 minute mark. Breathing nice and deeply. Remember guys, this video, right after any training session you have, it's pretty nice just to give every joint a little bit of extra love, give your whole nervous system time oh, to kind of come into a relaxed state from your session, whatever that was. And again, I'm forgetting that mark that we started at for a minute, so we're getting a little bit more stretching in right now. Then let's come back and try our best to sit but to heels, some of us, this might be tough, but this is where I'm gonna stop you today. So kind of hit ankles into knees, quads, hamstrings, hips, stretching out those glutes a little bit. Check out the video right after this, tagged up here. That'll be a little more upper body focused. This is exactly 16 minutes. Like and subscribe to get some more coming your way.